What's going on, YouTube? You're back with Shades, and we're going to continue our Let's Play of, of uh, Katawa Shoujo Hanako's Route. Last time we left off, um, we uh, we were uh, at the Shanghai with Lily and Hanako just talking about stuff, and the topic of hobbies came up. And uh, Hisa was uh, was like, what's yours, Lily Hanako? And Hanako was like, I like to sing, and I can use computers. Uh, what about you? And then he was like, well, I used to play soccer, but I can't anymore. I picked up reading in the hospital and then it just trailed off and it became awkward because everyone was like, Ah, we pick up hobbies because of the situation we're in. Oh no. But anyway. Let's try this. A soft ringing gives us pause. As Lily reaches into her pocket, it becomes obvious that the sound is coming from her phone. Sorry. It's okay. Lily gives a quick nod before shuffling out of her seat, taking the call a little distance away to avoid disturbing the both of us. Must be nice to be popular. Hanako smiles but doesn't take up the hook for further discussion. I end up just sitting back and closing my eyes, relaxing as best I can. I can't imagine sitting back in like that style of cafe because it's like the low seats that Jap Japan has. Um, so like there's no like chair, so would you just prop yourself up and lean back? Uh, Cause I prefer chairs with backs. Uh, I used to have a stool uh, as a chair here, but then I uh, I brought this old computer chair from the basement because I used to have a computer down there. Uh, but um, yeah, like I, I prefer a chair with a back because if I can lean back and relax, it's often better for me. It's nice and peaceful here. I wonder what it'd be like to have grown up somewhere like this, right? Rather than in the city. You come from the city? Looks like I found something she wants to talk about. Me! Yeah, you could say that I was a city kid through and through. It sounds like a lot changed. It did, but I'm, I'm still not quite sure what to make of it all, though. It's a bit of a culture shock in more ways than one. You must have gone through something like this when you first arrived at Yamaku, right? I imagine most stu new students would. N not really. Hanago's gaze, Hanago gazes a little to the side, looking unwilling to go on. I tilt my head inquisitively, but a couple of seconds pass with no further answer. But can't we deal with that on Monday? The fallout has start, hardly settled from the blast. I understand. I'll try talk, to talk her down. I know what she's like when she gets locked out onto my idea. Yes, thank you. I'll talk to you later then. Goodbye. Lily's conversation ends with a snap of her phone closing. She returns to our table, but doesn't take her seat. Need to go? Unfortunately, class representative work calls once again. I can come with you. It's all right, Hanako. I'll just be going straight to the student council. There's no need to spoil a fine evening on my account. Besides, if you were to accompany me on my way back to school, who would keep our poor Hisa company? Okay. I can join you for tea again later tonight if you'd like. I may well need it. We agree on that plan and Lily says her farewells to the both of us, taking your cane after Hanako passes it to her. Oops, I muted it. Despite my offer to pay for Lily's share, she insists on giving us her portion of the bill and gives her regards to Yuko as she takes her leave. And then, we're alone. It may be all well and good to have Hanako and me alone to have some time together, but all it typically means is the two of us sitting near each other in silence for a while. I wonder what I must look like to Hanako. I never thought of myself as a scary person, but to have someone who my own age acting this way around me makes me intensely self-aware. As if it's my fault that she's so troubled. It's not your fault. Um, I often tell this to friends who like say they're bad at making friends. Um, it's it's often that like just something doesn't click. It's either someone doesn't choose to communicate, someone feels awkward, someone is like extremely introverted. Like like things just don't click sometimes. So uh, it's not necessarily your fault, even though you think it is. It, it's 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 honestly counterproductive to think that everything may be your fault. It, it's not. It's just Hanako herself is very introverted. Um, she's very self-conscious about her scars, and her coming out is a very slow process. Uh, so just, just just gotta get used to it and give Hanako her time. That's all she really needs. She might get more used to people if she were to stop being so cloistered in Yamaku. But then, again, even when people are much older than her react so strongly after a single glance at her face, she may well feel the same way as I do now. There, it's a real catch-22. If she stays in Yamaku, she won't get used to socializing. But if she leaves, any effort she might try would get thrown back at her by the people who can't deal with her scarring. Want to order something else to keep us going? We haven't had much of a dinner after all. Hanako brightens and nods vigorously. I'm glad, glad that I brought up the topic for her. I catch Yuko's gaze, and she dutifully comes over to take our orders. 
Would you like something else? I'll have a sandwich special and a hot chocolate. A bit late for coffee by now, Hanuk. A bit late for coffee by now. Hanuko? Hit the button. I'll have the same. With a nod and a bow, Yuko turns on the ball of her foot and returns behind the counter, where she busies herself fishing out bread and condiments and working the machines to make our drinks. Not a word is said between us until Yuko comes back. She smiles and gives us our food and drinks before moving to a customer who's, who's called for her attention. Can I just say I don't like uh, Yuko's hair in buns? I don't know what it is, but to me she doesn't look... Uh, she, she's not as good with buns on. I like her hair down. I give up on the prospect of having much of a conversation with my companion and decide to just enjoy the meal, small as it may be. It tastes nice, as does most of the food here. After having a few mouthfuls, I know something's missing, namely the sound of Hanako eating. Looking back at her, I see Hanako fidgeting a little behind her untouched sandwich. Not hungry? She shakes her head from side to side. Even as she does, the patch of her hair keeps over the, she keeps over the right side of her face, still does its job in hiding it almost entirely. It's not that. Aw, I was ready to have your share, too. Y you looked troubled. Is something wrong? I'm startled by her thinking that I'm the one who looks troubled, but on second thought, she's probably right. My face may have given away my emotions without me noticing, and she's hardly a dim person. Quite the opposite. We're friends, right? Friends. From the tone of her voice and the shrieking posture, it looks as though I've hit yet another landmine. This is another reason why interacting with her is difficult, the self-imposed psychological barrier she puts up between herself and others, including me and most likely even Lily. It's a shame that... I think that we are. I'm a little taken off guard by Hanako's straightforward answer. All the more so since I was so... I was about to give up... I was about to give up on getting any reply at all. I see. Am I wrong? Sorry, I... No, it's just hearing confirmation of that of that from you is reassuring. To pick up on what you said earlier, since coming to Yamaku, I've been a bit uneasy about how I should relate to others. I find myself chuckling a little. It's a, it's surprising how much of a relief that was. I can feel my face smiling as I pick up my cup of hot chocolate and bring it to my lips. Mmm, hot cocoa. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Ah. Oh. Ouch. Oh, that's hot. That's why. That's why I haven't eaten yet. I was waiting for my drink to cool down first. I guess I'll wait then. The most of us share a little chuckle. The situation isn't really all that funny, but for some reason it feels like laughing is the most natural thing to do right now. I guess we're both wound up a bit about each other. I was so busy thinking Hanukkah was the one with something wrong, and it took, it took her to remind me that I was uneasy as well. But be that as it may, it still feels nice. A little, a little nice to have someone thinking about me like that in her own way. Following a light, quiet trudge up the hill into the school grounds, the two of us find ourselves between the two dormitories. Regular, regular night patrols between the male and female dormitory buildings, both for security and to quickly raise the alarm for any medical issues that may arise. The guard quickly, currently on duty, notices us and gives us a quick nod as he continues on his way. A loud yawn escapes from Hanako's mouth before she has a chance to cover it. I have a little doubt that she's fairly tired by now. I'd better be off to my room then. See you tomorrow, Hanako. Good night. We separate and begin walking our separate ways, before I stop and look back. Hanako stands there, waving to me as she smiles. I smile and wave back to her, and after a few seconds, she turns and walks up the stairs to our dormitory building, disappearing through the door. These little moments we share between us feel like a small treasure. One thing is sure, I want to protect that small, delicate smile she so fleetingly wears around so few people. I wonder about these feelings I have when Hanako's around, and when I'm able to do things for her. Whether they may be the seed for something beyond what we share now, we don't know. I have to say, this game is really, really well written. Uh, it's not the most engaging game, but, like, like I really, really like the writing. Like, uh, I'm pretty sure if you've been watching me for a while now, uh, you know that I love a good story. I love a good... I, I love characters. I love people. Um, the thing is, uh, like, a good amount of games, especially nowadays, tend to treat characters as characters rather than as people. And what by that I mean, um, that when, a when, when you treat a character as just a character, you tend to think, oh, they're in this trope, they're this type of character, they're this type of thing. You, you're not thinking deeply enough about the character, and then you end up writing a shallower character than what you could be creating. If you treat it like a person, you think, what would they do in the situation? 
would they follow a trope or would they do what they think is is the right thing to do what would they do um like you need to know your character as a person like my from my personal experience one thing you should do for characters um is think about what they would do in certain situations what would they order at a restaurant what would they order as a drink what would they order what would they do if what would they get is if they're what like if they're going to a movie like would they get popcorn would they get like uh some nachos what would they do like stupid stuff like that that you would never use in a story maybe um but if you can answer almost any question about a character then you thought about them very very deeply and you can then turn them into a very deep character a D character doesn't need a, doesn't need a complicated backstory. They just need to be known as a person, treated like a person. And when you write scenarios for them, you need to know what they would do in the scenario. Kaneko is slowly developing as a character because she is allowed to get used to Hisao, and Hisao is also getting used to her. And so that's why these things of them acting as people, because guess what? People, this happens. Hanukkah won't be shy forever towards Hisao. And Hisao won't be awkward forever towards Lily and Hanukkah. He will get used to it. They will get used to it. And like it, things like this happen. That's why like you need to write characters properly. And this is what this game does. Whew, that was a long diatribe. But I guess it's a good time as any to ask you guys to, hey, this is the middle of the video, and uh, don't forget to hit that the subscribe and notification button to know when I upload. Um, I, I, I honestly don't like asking um, for that, uh, especially during in the middle of the video. I hate it. But, like, because of how YouTube's changing and how their announcements recently of, uh, of how they don't push videos... To subscribers unless they're active, well, hey, if you want to be an active subscriber of mine, hit that bell icon and just be notified that when I'm uploading. Anyway, let's continue with the game, shall we? The summertime sun is something to be savored, but when combined with the clean country air, it's all the better. The track and field club members are horsing around on the field ahead. Some are playing with a soccer ball, others are talking, and a few laugh as two of them mock fight with each other. None of them pay me any heed as I sit alone in the grass, underneath the shade of a particularly large tree. It's a nice and peaceful moment after a dreary day of schoolwork. I played soccer pretty often before my heart attack, so I had thought it would be really nostalgic to watch them. What I'm feeling now, though, is quite distinct from that emotion. Is someone walking towards us? Who are you? You're cute! <laughs> I hear footsteps approaching from behind me, and I turn to my side to see one of my classmates taking a seat beside me. I'm taken off guard, as the two of us haven't talked much before, and I didn't think anyone would notice me here. Sup? Hi, Miura. What is it? Miura, wasn't it? Just call me Miki. Surnames are too stuffy. Likewise, then. We both look back out to the field where the guys are playing. It looks like they're getting ready to have a second game with people spreading out their positions and the ball being carried to the center of the field. Apparently, in the demo version of the game, Miki had a route. Um, and I'm really up upset that like she doesn't because she's a really cute looking character and I think her handicap is she doesn't have a hand, right? Yep. Um, but like I, I, that's something I really... like. She's also a dark skin character, which this game could use a bit more of. Uh, but I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not too hung up over it because the product of the game is really nice. And I feel like had they had to focus on more than just the four routes that they, the game has, um, it would have changed things a bit. Uh, five routes, I think. Emmy, uh, Rin, Lily, Hanako, and she's name five, yeah. Uh, and plus, um, because the girls were in pairs, it was easy to see who to focus on. And Miki seemed to be on her own. So, um... I'm not sure how they would like interweave her in, but I'm really upset that they, they, I couldn't see more of this character because I like how I like her. She looks pretty. <laughs> sure enough, the whistle is blown to begin the match, and they get right back into it. Not going to play? Nah, I'm just going to rest for a bit. What about you? You look, you kind of look like you wanted to play when you were watching us before. So someone did notice me after all. No, just be senpai. <laughs> It's kind of a long story. Her face doesn't have piqued their interest. I'm in Yamaka because I've got a heart condition, so I can't really play soccer anymore. Wanted to be a soccer player, did you? No, I only really did it for fun. My friends played it, so I played it as well. Any of those guys playing around could have been me before my accident, but I don't feel like I have any real wish to go back to that either. It's a little hard to explain. I'm still decently physically built from the days when I played, even my strengths largely left me by now, and I got on well with the other club members. When I think about it, I should feel pretty bad watching people play when I can't anymore, yet I don't. Maybe it's a good thing, a sign that I've gotten over it and that I'm ready to become a newest person. 
good man, he so. Sorry, I'm kind of rambling. It's cool. I'm actually glad to hear that. It's supposed like you really got you have your stuff together. Some of the people that come to Yamaku are pretty messed up at first. So you're a member of the track and field club then? Yep, been in it since I first arrived. Don't suppose you're friends with Emmy. Short, fast runner, no legs. I don't think there are many that many female track and field members. Haha, <laughs> Emmy. Everyone knows about her, don't they? But nah, I tend to get on better with the guys, so me and Emmy don't really talk much. Anyway, what about you? Oh, well, I'm not really in any clubs. Real clubs, anyway. You've been hanging around with Hanukkah on that blonde Amazon, though, right? Blonde Amazon. I suppose Lily has the height to fit that description, if nothing else. I nod in response without making too fine a point about things. Is she really that tall? She can't be that tall. I mean, like, sure. Like, most Asian women are don't go past 5'5", five, five, but, like, she can't be that tall. She's 171 centimeters. I don't know what that is in inches. Sorry, I'm a filthy American. 5.6 feet. She's like 5'7". That's not, that's not tall. Jesus, people. I wouldn't call her an Amazon. I would just say she's pretty tall for a girl. Then don't worry about it. As long as you got some friends, you don't need to join a club. A loud whistling from the field attracts our attention. One of the players is on the ground, clutching his leg, and either stopped to play, stopped play to jog up to him, leaving Miki grimacing. Ouch, that looks painful. That guy really has bad luck. As she continues to look out into the field, I can't help but be reminded of her own injuries. Her left arm, ending in a stump rather than a hand, has been bandaged up for the entire time I've been in Yamaku. Her injury, she doesn't seem that new. She tries to talk to me again and catches me looking. Both of us sit in awkward silence as she takes up her bandaged arm and holds it in her lap with the other remaining hand. Sorry, I guess I'm a little bit. It's fine, really. Her tone is light, but neither of us says anything afterwards. Every disabled student here has their own way of dealing with their problems, and some finding their condition troubles them is only natural. I'm included among them, after all. The injured guy from the soccer game manages to get on his feet with some help, and ends up hobbling off the field with one arm over the shoulder of another for support. Probably just pulled a muscle if he can still manage to walk. The whistle blows again, and the game continues once more with one less man in the field. Hanging out with Han Hanukkah on that blonde girl. Keeps a pretty strange company. How so? It's just that Hanukkah's kind of... I don't know. Shy? No, it's not really that. It's just... She's got some issues, I think. I can't really put it in a nice way. Not that I don't think she's a nice person, though. She's perfectly nice. It's just hard to deal with. It sounds like Miki, or at least some of the other people in her class, have tried to get closer to Hanukkah in the past, and that didn't go well. I think her judgment is rather harsh, given that everyone, not just those in Yamaku, have their own issues. Then again, I haven't known Hanako for that long, so it wouldn't surprise me if there was some stuff I didn't know about. I'll just take it as it comes. She's a nice person, and I think that should be all that matters. Miki's eyes narrows a little, and her smile spreads. You really like her, don't you? Oh my god! Ah, I muted the game! When did I mute the game? What's wrong with me? Uh... Hold on, I, I didn't pull up the walkthrough. I should have done that. But thankfully, I opened the browser already, so. I think. I think. <laughs> so we admit it. Cool! I was thinking of admitting it anyway, just for fun. But, like, yeah, I, I'm glad that's the right. Uh, to be keep no. <laughs> to be completely honest, yeah, I do. I'd appreciate it if you didn't tell anyone. Hey, whoa, you can trust me. No problems there. To be honest, I think it's kind of cute. If you want to go for it, don't let me stop you. Oh, Miki. I would have loved to date you. You seem like a nice gal. Thanks. Also, like, I've slowly noticed in my, in my time, I'm, like, into, like... I don't know. I, like, I used to think that I was into tomboyish girls, but no, it's more like I'm into girls who are sure of themselves, who who have the confidence to like be like, I like how I want. And unfortunately, tomboyish girls seem to like have that confidence about them, where they're like, I'll do what the fuck I want. I'm a strong, independent woman who don't need no man. But it's more like I, I just like girls who are like 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 f fully realizing that I am I am me, and I'll act how I want. She may say that, but she was talking about Hanako having issues. Still, I want to hold myself to the words I said. Hanako's problems don't matter. I'll deal with anything that comes up because I want to help her. And if, if there's even the smallest possibility that I can pull Hanako out of her depression and seclusion, then I should work toward that no matter what. If she needs a prince, then I will be that prince. I wouldn't say prince. Oh, that's such an outdated term. So odd. <laughs> As I think about the possibility of a relationship, 
I can see Miki grinning at me while watching my face, so I'm no doubt blushing. And looking away from her only makes her laugh. Miki gives off a different vibe from the other girls. Talking to her feels more like I'm talking to a guy than a woman. Her saying she prefers male company doesn't help to dispel the notion either. Those are the best kind of girls. The ones that, like, don't care about gender. I mean, I don't care about gender. Most of my friends were female anyway. Excuse me. Even my even now, most of my friends are female. Glancing at my watch shows that lunch break is ending in only a few minutes. Time to start heading back to class. Lunch is about to end. Wanna head back? Yeah, we'd better. I pick myself up the, off the grass and dust myself off. Offering a hand to Miki to help her up as well, she takes it and easily pulls herself up, showing the muscles moving her toned, bare arms in the process. Hey Coco, if you're watching, I think you would like this girl very much. <laughs> she's toned, she's buff. It's such a shame though, like I would have preferred like a, a, another athletic girl in the mix. Cause Emmy, like she's athletic, but she's more uh, like, she's less jock and more like, uh, I just like to run and I'm cute. Uh, but yeah, I, I like Miki. I, I would have liked for her to have a round, but again, I, uh, apparently, like, a, a lot of the demo builds would have, um, her have more, um, dialogue, but I'm not sure where you would find one of the demo builds nowadays. Um, this game is very old, and I, as much as I would like to find one of those demo builds, um, I would, uh, I don't think it's worth the effort. But if anyone if anyone out there knows where I could find a demo build and just, like, like, send me a link, it'd be nice. Come to think of it, why aren't you wearing the normal girl's blouse? Eh, it's too hot and constricting. The boys' uniform is better anyway. I thought she was just wearing a t-shirt. Like, for me, like, the, the uniforms are the same, no matter what. Also, she looks real cute in it, so I'm just like, I'm not gonna complain. But we're on the hot like around, so I can't be, I can't be disloyal. I'm a good boy. <laughs> she throws her arms around a bit to emphasize her point, which has the side effect of showing off one particular part of her body that would be especially constricted by the blouse. Talk about her boobs? I talk about her boobs? Bruh! Girls have boobs! Get over it! They're nice! Boobs are nice, but gotta get over it, man! I get you're in high school, but come on! Like, like I, I always feel like that I'm, I'm a weird guy, because, like, as much as I like boobs, boobs are nice, but, like, in high school, like, I never caught myself staring at a girl. Like, I never caught myself, like, staring at a pretty woman. Like, I, I would never stare unless, like, like, the only time I would ever stare is when, like, I got lost in thought and I was looking in a direction. Like, I would not never stare at a girl and be like, oh my god, she's so pretty. But, like, it was like, like, if a girl ever showed off her figure to me, like, like, just incidentally, I wouldn't be like, oh god damn, I want to get in that. I'd be like, uh, like, I, I don't think I would have given it any mind. I would just be like, well, whatever. The two of us start to walk back to the main building through the gardens, talking as we go. Anyway, I think it's a good place to end for now. Um, we, the scene transition, and it's it's like it's fine. But yeah, I wish Miki had more dialogue because like this is the only route where we've actually spoken to her. Uh, so it would have been nice uh, for her to have like just her own dialogue. I want to see more of her as a character, which is a shame. I think because uh, Hanako's route is the last one, unless I plan on going into like Kenji's bad route, which is like the lonely end and is the, the bro end. Which I don't want to go into because I hate Kenji. Uh, but anyway. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you want to see more videos from me or from the series, hit that subscribe button. And of course, hit that notification bell if you want to know when I upload. And as always, you're not exiting the Shadyverse. My name is Shades and I hope you've enjoyed your day in the Shades. See you guys next time. Bye.